This is a reminder that Thursday, April the 2nd, is the World Autism Awareness Day stream on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Novora underscore autism. Don't forget to come visit as we play Final Fantasy XIV or Realm Reborn live on Twitch for World Autism Awareness Day. Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. It is Year 2, Day 41 for EDSS and the Realm Reborn. And last time, we started on the main story of Patch 2.3, where we were asked by Minfilia to come here to Ulda after a riot ensued because of refugees getting really vicious. There's the person who's leading them is the mysterious merchant who we have not yet come across. Hopefully, Flame Commander Swift here of the Immortal Flames, the Grand Company here in Old Ah, will be able to give us the information we need to bring this merchant to justice. So, let's speak with the Commander Swift, and take on his challenge entitled, Reap the Whirlwind. Swift is determined to stop the rabble-rousing merchant from sowing further sedition. This merchant has not only publicly incited sedition within the Sultanate, but gone so far as to provide material support to would-be belligerents. It galls me that his role in the uprising should have escaped our notice for so long, yet I can well imagine why it did. Rightly or wrongly, those with whom he consults do not trust us. Alas, trust is not easily gained, even in times of peace. We must nevertheless try, for I believe it is only with the cooperation of the refugees that we will catch our quarry, and so I would have you continue your investigation in Pearl Lane. We know that the merchant sought to group people of Lost Hope and Stone's Throw, so it seems reasonable to assume that me he may have approached the residents of Pearl Lane as well. After all, the first riots occurred within the city itself. Most, if not all, we would discuss to we refuse to discuss this subject with you, but there is one who may be willing to do so. A man named Londabaz. He too has his misgivings about us, but I believe he understands that these riots do little to further his people's calls. So, Pearl Lane, as far as where Old Da is concerned, because I do not want to leave Old Da at this point in time, we want to go back to the Aetherite Crystal for this one. Of course. And the closest one to Pearl Lane, I do believe, because I made this journey many times before, is at the Weaver's Guild. Weaving is one of the various crafts that one can take when playing this game. Um, it's one of three that are available, along with goldsmithing and alchemy. So, we'll make our journey here to Pearl Lane. And find our refugee of interest, Mr. Landabert. Or is it Mr. Landabau? Either way, this guy I'm sure is gonna either give us the, the shove off, or he's gonna hopefully be helpful. Let's see what he has to say. First the man comes with the promise of deliverance. Seeing your suffering first hand and it will bear no longer, says he. Your friend, your ally, your comrade in arms. Take his hand and he will guide you to a better tomorrow. Then comes a soldier with the promise of justice. Follow the man who came before at your peril, says he. For they who sow the wind shall reap the whirlwind. The man's no saint, any fool can see that. But were tools for his task to be used and discarded? As with this soldier, he thinks only of his mission. He's more honest than the man, but every bit is ruthless, make no mistake. With whom shall I cast my lot? Neither, says I. Far as I'm concerned, you know better than the bastard you pursue. Now the soldier is thinking how else might he get what he wants. He's tried the diplomatic approach and failed. Mayhap a firmer hand is needed. Mayhap he needs to make an example out of this Olamegan scum like he did those five fools from Lost Hope. Well, you'll get no justification from me, soldier, if that's what you're waiting for. I'll not waste a hand, raise a hand against you. Of course not, because I am the warrior of light after all. But neither will I lend a hand to help you. So where does that lead us? Not that it makes any difference. <laughs> the gold seems bent on granting your every bloody wish. It's not my fault. And who may you be? 
There you are, Landabat. Have you given any thought to my proposal? Y you! I... Did we find our man? Because it did say mistrustful merchant. There he goes towards the gate of Thor. Go and claim your prize for a coin in country. I, my, I align myself with no country. I align myself with all of Eorzea. Because that is the will of the Warrior of Light, after all. Okay, so... Said Gate of Thal, so I guess it would just be easiest to just run out the gate itself. Before I do, though, I guess it would be in my best interest to mend a little bit. I mean, it won't cost me much. Alright, now the pursuit can continue. Out the Gate of Thal. Yeah, I don't often come out this way. If for no other reason than the fact that this this particular gate really doesn't get much attention. Alright, that's not my chocobo, and head north. Heck, we could have just as easily t used the Gate of Null. We could have used the Gate of Null and we could have gotten there maybe even quicker. Well, heck, if I had remembered, because yeah, I have gone through this before with my first avatar, but it's been so long since I did, so... Really, there was no way I could have possibly known just exactly where I was heading. Or at least not, not have remembered where I was heading. So, our person of interest should be in here somewhere. He won't be in there because that door is boarded. This has a block, this has a wooden block on it. And I don't think the Warrior of Light can lift that, but yeah, here's our guy. Hey, you! What's your deal, man? Yeah, with the, yeah, with the brass blades and the standing back. Uh, you again? Well, why are you pursuing me? Well, because I want to talk. Uh, treason, uh, sedition, revolution—that's uh, preposterous. Uh, who has filled your head with these lies? Refugees? The self-same refugees who tell us the streets will die? Ha! You have no evidence to prove your accusations. None. Well, I do want to still talk with you. No, I will not accompany you to the Hall of Flames. You have no right to detain me. Well, then... For the sake of argument, let us say I did do the things you claim. Surely you don't think I give, would give a Kakirin's ass about politics? It was business. Only business. Uh, yeah, look, you're looking for a place to run, aren't you? You have something like us. Yeah. I'm holding a lance. You wouldn't get far by with it, with me holding it. Oh, but who do we have here? We both know I'm not the one you want. However, if you agree to protect me, I swear I shall tell you everything. All right. But oh, <laughs> yeah. The moment you open your mouth, an archer decides to end your life. Take no prisoners. Don't look at me. I'm not the one who shot the arrow. I don't even know... Well, yeah, I did get, have Edie recently learn archery, but I'm not responsible for this. Yeah. Tell the others to spread out and search the area. The killer may still be close. Let's hope for your sake he is. Yeah, like, I saw what you did. I know what you did last summer. Alright, Mr. Torch. Hold adventure! I would know more about your relationship with the victim as well as the events leading up to his death. Well, if you need to know... The man is more responsible for the recent riots? Mayhap we always murder a debt of gr gratitude. Um, do you really want to go that far? In any case, it is obvious you are not the one whom we seek. You may carry on with your investigation, Scion. And so with that, we go back to Ola to speak with Commander Swift. Because, yeah, the person at the head of the riots is now dead. So therefore, yeah, Stone Torch thinks, yeah, we it's problem solved, right? Well, now we gotta find the guy who killed our person who sparked the riots, because due to that guy, we have more problems to deal with. Whether they get dealt with immediately, or eventually, remains to be seen. 
So, let's speak with the commander once again to complete our challenge and... What the heck is th What the heck do you have? Oh, you're using a hel- You have a helmet on! You have a real- You have a really freaky helmet on! Where the heck did you get this, Dante's Winsome? I don't- I don't know how you do that, but that's impressive. And the cards he's holding, I'll show you why he's holding them in a moment. Because, yeah. I was gonna save this for later, but if he's holding them now, I might as well show you now after we we're done speaking with the commander. What news, Edie? Where's the merchant? Well, if you must know... Murdered?! Damn it, hold to the seventh hell! He was not simply murdered, Edie. He was silenced. Too many knew his face and he was ready to divulge his secrets. Oh, do not despair, though. We may be closer to identifying the true orchestrator of these riots than you realize. Well, let's hope you're right about that. So, choice of mold tea, lava toe legs, apkalu armet, or black truffle risotto, as Gordon Ramsay would say. Um, I've never actually had truffles before. I've had risotto before, but never with black truffles. Um, I think in this situation, it's best for me to take the omelette. Now, we'll speak with the commander again, but since this, with the cards, has been leaked, I might as well go show you what they're getting at right now. This was one thing I wanted to save for a later on, but since the since the cat's pretty much out of the bag now, I might as well just show it to you now. This was uh, this well hill youth. This is something that was recently introduced a couple of months ago, and it starts here with this well hill youth. We'll get back to the commander in a second, but first, let's speak with this young man and take on the level 15 challenge entitled, It Could Happen to You. A well-heeled youth on Emerald Avenue appears to have been the beneficiary of some good fortune, and may not be averse to sharing it. Do be careful with those! Break anything or I shall be forced to deduct it from your salary! Beg pardon? What is my loyal man civil carrying? Why are not so small fortune and prizes ably won by yours truly in the gold saucer? You have heard of the gold saucer? Nay? Hey, gads, man! You might at least try to keep up with the times. It is only the salt in its newest and finest place of entertainment. Thrilled to the sight of majestic birds rolling down the straits at the chocobo races. Pick your wits against your peers at the triple triad tables. At the gold saucer, one can do all this and more. And if you know what you're about, you'll walk out a wealthier man than you wanted. If there's a better place to shake off one's cares after a grueling day of promenading, I've never heard of it. Did I mention that the female attendants are particularly easy on the eye? Oh, but I dare say you'd rather discover them for yourself. Yes, I'll wager you're wondering just how in Thor's good name you can get to experience the wonders of the gold saucer firsthand. Am I right or am I right? Ha! <laughs> I thought as much. Well, since this has been my lucky day, I don't see why it shouldn't be yours too. I just so happen to have a spare golden airship ticket, you see. Consider it a gift from one eligible young man about to own to another. And so he gives it to me. Just show that ticket to the lovely girl in the uniform over at the landing, and you'll have a seat on the next airship bound for the revelry and riches. Be fairly warned though, you may expect no mercy from me should our paths cross off the triple triad tables. Nay, not so much as an out. Ha <laughs> ha! So, yes, we want to take this to the airship landing. Now all I have to do is just remember how I get there. Because yeah, this is a trip I do not make often. If... I hope I'm remembering this correctly. The way to get there is, um... Bear with me here. <laughs> okay, that's the Pugilist Guild. I think the way I want to go is this way. It's not... It's close to the Adventurer's Guild, but it's not actually there. Yeah, we've met cross paths with the Dancing Mikose before. Um, we're looking for... Yes, you're the person we're speak looking for. We want to go to the airship landing, please. And now that we have, let's go ahead and... Well, since we're going to a place of entertainment, I think it is only fair that we dress appropriately. So, let's get out of my battle gear and dress in my Grand Company uniform. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just prefer it this way. This is the reception desk for flight's band for the Mandeville Gold Saucer. Before proceeding, I must ask that you submit your ticket for inspection. Hmm, you do have a ticket, yes? Oh, of course I do. 
Too bad it can't get me into the Willy Wonka Chaka factory. <laughs> it appears that everything is in order, and Airship will be departing shortly before the next bell. Shall I reserve a seat for you? Oh yes, of course, please. And so with that... Away we go! Yes, the mouth opens because, yeah, somewhere out in the crazy desert is this place. They apparently hollowed out a giant cactuar and turned him into an amusement park attraction. And for those of you who have seen Final Fantasy VII, the music that's about to play might be familiar to you. certainly seems to put a smile on Edie's face, and hey, why not? I mean, if Romy Born is coming to an end soon, we might as well go out having fun. Welcome to the Mandeville version of the Gold Saucer. For those of you who played Final Fantasy VII, um, that particular area, the Gold Saucer, was something that was a part of the, um, the ruined village of Coral. I think it was North Coral. You ran through the village, um, and then you used a, basically a, um, one of those, um, I don't know, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's like a, you use them to go up and down mountains, basically, is what happens. So, and, and they're attached to cable cars, so they're basically like cable cars, yeah, you can use them to go up mountains. That's how you, that's what those are. It's a shame I can't remember what the name of it is. But in order to get to proper understanding what we're doing here at the Gold Saucer, let's take with the ticketer, because I believe he can give us the information, yes. Entitled, World of Wonders, the attendant at the airship landing seems eager to welcome you to the Gold Saucer. Welcome, honored guests, to the Mandeville Gold Saucer, where your wildest dreams are ever but a card or chocobo's beak away from coming true. If this is your first visit, nothing will please us more than to give you a full tour of our establishment, that you might enjoy its wonders to the fullest. At the conclusion of the tour, it is custom to offer our esteemed patrons a complimentary gift, straight from the vault of our illustrious proprietor himself. Consider it Master Mandeville's way of personally thanking you for your patronage. Should you wish to take the tour, pray proceed to the main counter over there and speak with the receptionist. On behalf of the management, may I take this opportunity to thank you for choosing the Gold Saucer. Rest assured, my colleagues and I will spare no effort in seeing that your visit is a pleasant and profitable one. May fortune smile upon you! And so, yeah, basically this is a quest to just get you acquainted with everything that you can find here at the Gold Saucer. And as you can see, yeah, the big color uh, cactuar, these things are everywhere! <laughs> Alright, sir. Mr. Attendant with all the information. What can you tell me? Welcome travelers to the Gold Salsa. This is the main counter where you can purchase tickets for the mini cactpot, acquire and redeem Mandeville Gold Salsa points, and much, much more. But what in the world of Mandeville Gold Salsa points? I hear you cry. A most astute question, and one which I shall be only too happy to answer. But first, if I may direct your gaze to your left. Behold, those beyond those majestic gates, you'll find Chocobo Square, into our centerpiece attraction, the Chocobo Racing Circuit. Yeah, that'll be in there. What Chocobo owner has not dreamed of pitting their fleetest bird against their own finest in a pulse cricketing dash for fame and fortune? We call it the Sport of Sultans, and I dare say for good reason. Yeah, I remember Chocobo Racing was also part of the Final Fantasy VII Gold Saucer. Ah, uh, now where were we? Ah, oh, yes. Mandeville Gold Saucer Points. Put simply, MGP, as we call it for short, 
is the currency by which dreams are bought and sold within these halls. But my associate here beside me can tell you more, including how to go about acquiring some MPG of your very own. Please speak with him to continue your tour. And a courteous bow, I must say. Thank you, good sir. So yeah, let's go over to actually get ourselves some points. So you're about to experience the wonders of the gold saucer for the first time? How I envy you! Ah, uh, but before you venture forth, you want to share, exchange a share of your gill for MGP, a service which it is my great honor to provide. With MGP in your corpus, you'll be able to enjoy all the fabulous attractions we have to offer, and all of the wonderful games. You can play them with skill, you'll find your total stack of points increasing 10, 20, even 100 fold. Now that you know the fundamentals, you're ready to step out onto the floor of the gold saucer. Your tour will continue at Card Square to the southwest. The card trainer there will be your guide. I would of course be happy to exchange some of your guilt for MGP before you venture on. While my associates and I just strive to leave nothing on Spain, there truly is no substitute for first-hand experience, and I heartily recommend trying your hand at our many amusements for... yourself. <laughs> Couldn't quite fit it all on there, but yeah, let's speak with our attendant. So every 10 guild you spend gets you a Mandeville Gold Saucer point. When you start out, or if your go gil or if your GP level goes too low, you can max it out to 500, costing you 5,000 gil to do so. So now that we've done that, now that we actually have MGP, let's go over now to where the Triple Triad is taking place. Triple Triad, for those of you who are not familiar, was a card game that was made popular in Final Fantasy VIII. A variation of it was introduced in Final Fantasy IX, but this is the far more recognized and the far more appreciated of the two versions. And I have to say, it was the best version of what was the worst Final Fantasy game ever. So, Triple Triad Trader, what have you to say? Well, aren't you a handsome one? Welcome to Card Square, one of the Triple Triad Tables. And man, that bow tie is way too big, girl. What's Triple Triad, you, know, you ask? Why, only the mind-bending, pulse-pounding, maddeningly Moorish card game that's taken the realm by storm. But don't take my word for it, behold! Can you not feel the tension in the air? Form a hand of five cards and play the role of a field general sending your bravest into battle. Should you wish to learn the rules and experience the excitement for yourself, you need only ask. Start today and then we are even throwing some complimentary cards to help you on your way. You can face off against a single opponent at any time, or if you crave an even greater test of your skills, take part in one of our regular tourneys. And believe me when I tell you, there's no feeling quite like standing triumphant on the battlefield after vanquishing all comers. You really should try it! A minute to learn, a lifetime to master. Which is also what they say about Reversi, by the way. That's Triple Triad! Oh, but I'm getting carried away. You have a tour to finish. Wonder Square is your next destination. Not that there's any hurry, of course. If you'd like to play a hand or two before you go, you need but say the word. Well, I don't know if we'll necessarily do that right now, but uh, I think we do want to speak with the Triad Master to at least get some cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, well... Oh, we have to... Okay. I'm trying to remember how this works. <laughs> or at least in the starting point. Okay, we... Okay, we got our cards. Now, they're giving us a set of five. So now... We can use these. You have to double-click on each of the cards before you can actually use them and add them to your deck. Sorry for skipping through it that fast, but I really wanted to try and keep the tour going as much as I possibly can. Besides, I want to get back to that quick problem we have in Ulda. So we can speak with the Triple Triad Master and take him on, take her on in a basic challenge. So, we have to pay up 5 MGP, and we've got 10 MGP if we win. Plus, there is a small chance that we can get additional cards. So let's go ahead and play a hand of Triple Triad. So, Triple Triad, basically, here's what happens. Okay, the Triad Master has been chosen to go first, so it's place Triple Triad is- Oh, okay. So, we can- basically what happens is that we can see everyone's cards. We can see the, the Master's cards. All of the numbers represent a value. 
What you want to do is to take a card that you have and put it in a spot where the value on the number of one side of your card is larger than on the other side. In this instance, you can see I have a 4 right here on the right side of the bomb card, and it's higher than the 1 on the left side of the chocobo card. So once we place that, we have claimed the card. Now what they can do, or in this, case, mean, or in this instance, capture the card. Now they can do that back to you as well. Which is what exactly what he did, or in this case she did. So now we want to get him back, or her back, by putting another one. You see I have a 5 here on the one side of this card, and it's higher than the 2 on the right side of that card. So, let's place it, and claim the card. Okay, so they didn't really have a play by the looks of it, so we got them right where we wanted them. This opens up a possibility right here. If I use the Sabotender card, I can place it down here, and I can claim that card. So now they'll take one. Okay, what she could have done was taken the five here on the pudding card, and used it down here on the three on my Sabotender card to claim my Sabotender. But since she didn't, we'll go ahead and use my Mandragora to get her card. Now even though she got mine back, because I had the majority there, because I had the majority of the colors for myself, I won the match. Oh well done! Now that you have an understanding of the rules, it's time for you to go forth and seek out the many triple trial players found here in the Gold Saucer and the world beyond. The game has gained an avid following and you're sure to find winning participants in various locales across Eorzea. This is true. You can challenge any other player who's playing the game. You can go up to them, select them, and challenge them to a game. You can also challenge anyone who has that icon over their head. The one with the... that looks like a card that almost looks like a shuriken and has the exclamation mark on it. Um, heck, you can even do that sometimes for the right NPC. And if they do um, play Triple Triad, but they aren't... If, even if their icon isn't on, you can still challenge them, but you they have to be able to be challenged. You can't just challenge any NPC to play. So, with that taken care of, let's continue on, because we still have a lot to cover here in the Mandible Gold Saucer, and I mean a lot. And I don't think we're going to be able to get... Oh, look who it is! This is Ocean Royal and Roman Dusk. I actually know these two, because these two are actually... I actually was at their Ceremony of Eternal Bonding a couple of months ago, so I actually know these two really well. It's really nice to see them here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna show them this video later and hopefully they'll take notice that, hey, you were on my video one time! I'm, sh I'm sure they'll appreciate appreciated the opportunity to have a cameo like that. So yeah, we want to go to this gatekeeper. Now, I don't know what you want to gatekeeper? That doesn't sound all that fun. Well, believe me, it actually is. You look lost, honey. Why don't I show you around? I've been dying for some company. Ugh. Feast your eyes on Wonder Square. From gripping games and awe-inspiring attractions to the finest and fine dining and the freshest of refreshments, there's no end to the wonders housed within these halls. And let's not forget the most wondrous of them all. Al Caloso, as we lovingly call our mammoth Cactuar mascot, is the star of some of our most popular events. Suffice it to say, you won't want to miss them. Now I know what you're thinking. With everything going on at the Gold Saucer, how can I ever hope to keep up? But you needn't worry, my fellow gatekeepers and I will always be on hand to see that you don't miss a thing. For the continuation of your tour, I've been instructed to direct you into the waiting halls of my colleague Valeda at the Cactpop board. She's one of our most popular girls and once you meet her, I'm sure you'll understand why. Well, ta-ta for now! <laughs> and about to boot. What she's talking about, what gatekeepers do, is that they hold events known as gates. They're basically like fates, but they have a gold saucer twist to them. And the twist is, is that at any random time, an announcement will go up and say, you have to go to a certain gatekeeper to participate in the various events. And when you participate in an event, you can earn more gold, mandible gold saucer points for yourself when you do. Now... I want to see if I can get up to where I need to go. I think if I go up these stairs, I'll be right where I need to be. And by the way, there are Ethernet shards in case you want to use them. 
But yes, this is the cact pot board, and we just want to speak with Valeda. Hello there, Valeda. Greetings, handsome. I've been waiting for you. I'm Valeda, and I'd like to personally welcome you to Event Square. The most spacious of all the areas of the Gold Saucer, Event Square is a veritable cornucopia of pleasure and delight. Doubtless the sizable stage in the middle of the square has caught your eye. And it's only by participating in the gate that you can actually be on it. That is the scene of some of our most sensational attractions, so don't be shy about taking center stage. After th and after the curtain has fallen, why not try changing your life forever? At the Jumbo Cact Pot, all you need is a handful of MGP and a head full of dreams. Just choose four numbers and cast your hopes to the heavens. You never know just when the mayor will, be s will smile down upon you. Now as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you, I'm afraid it's time for us to part. The next and final leg of your tour takes you to Round Square. Don't think too hard about the name, darling. Even I'm not sure it's supposed to make sense. <laughs> well, I'll take your word for it. And she's gonna blow me a kiss as I've been for a while. So yeah, when you come to the Jumbo Cackpot board, we'll just get through all this. We'll try your hand at Jumbo Cackpot. I'll explain how it works, blah blah blah, because it's so long, yada yada yada. So, once we um, speak with the Jumbo Cackpot person, we can purchase the Jumbo Cackpot at a cost of 400, um, 400 MGP, 100 MGP, yeah. So basically, here's how it goes. We have to choose a number, um, we have to choose a four-digit number, and how it works is that when the cat pot is drawn, and it's always on a Saturday night, when it's drawn, you're, if you've won anything, it will be based on the order of your numbers from the last number to the first number. So, if I choose one, two, three, and four, then, depending on what's drawn, if a four is the last number drawn, in my when the cat pot is made available when it's drawn on Saturday night, if I got a four and if I put four on my ticket and it matches the four that's drawn, I get I win a, it's more MGP than I would have had if I don't have any numbers matching at the end. You do get MGP regardless of whether you win anything or not if any of your numbers match, but that's not the point. Of course, you're trying to win the jumbo cat pot. So basically, if the four matches the four that was drawn in the Jumbo Cat Pot, I get more MGP. If the three and the four were matching, I get more. And so on and so forth. So basically that's how it works from last number to first number. But we're going to choose a um, different number here. Um, since it's my first time here, we'll just choose a random number. Um, to find one that I might like. No, 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 no. No, screw you, Satan. Yeah, you know what? 1395 will do. Well, now all you have to do is wait until we announce the winning number. Why not join us here at the Cackpot Hall for the drawing? And so, yeah, drawn every Saturday at 10 p.m. And that's 10 p.m. my time in the Eastern Time Zone in North America. Alright. Now we gotta get back to business. Yeah, I wasted too much time here. I guess I know I want us all to have fun and whatnot, but seriously, if we take too long, it's just gonna be filling up more time in this video than I had intended. And this actually, to be honest, is actually taking a lot more time than I had intended it to do. You know what, I'll jump down. Because I need to find... Where's I'm looking for? Okay, I think we have to go this way. We'll go back towards the main 8th right. And while we're here, we, mu we should attune to it, at the very least. Just so that I can come back here with Dee, Dee whenever I want. Alright. Okay, so yeah. That's an example of, a, of an event by a gatekeeper being brought into effect. Um, were you the person I wanted to speak to? Yeah, I do believe so. Are you the first time visitor I was told to expect? A thousand welcomes to the Gold Saucer and a thousand welcomes to Round Square. How can a square be round, you ask? I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> 
more important thoughts moving on to more important matters is that lofty peak not a sight to be is that not a sight to behold that is not coral the main attraction here at round square one of our most thrilling events pits our customers against each other in a challenge to see who can most swiftly scan its heights i tell you the view from the summit is a sight to behold and that concludes the tour of the gold saucer while i'm sure you're eager to start enjoying yourself Pray do not forget to return to the main counter and claim your comp complimentary gift. <laughs> and she even curtsies. Nice. So yeah, you see the icon on the right, which is one of those main event icons? That's basically where you would go for your next to uh, participate in a gate. We want to go back to the main counter to complete the challenge, first of all. But we'll get to the second part of this in a moment. Alright, sir. Welcome back, honored guests. I trust that you've come away from the tour with a greater appreciation of all the gold saucer has to offer. Yeah, I guess you can say we have. As a token of our appreciation for your patronage, it is my great pleasure to offer you a complimentary gift from the personal vaults of our esteemed proprietor. Well, knock me down with a chocobo's tail feather! Is that a new customer I see? <laughs> I could have hardly picked a better time to drop in for an impromptu inspection. Yeah, we won't worry about that. Uh, Master Roland, this gentleman here has but mo has but this moment completed his introductory tour. Is that so? Well, then allow me to personally welcome you to the Gold Saucer. I am Roland, good sir, the fellow entrusted with overseeing the daily affairs of this fine establishment on behalf of our esteemed proprietor, a great man if ever there was one. You are an adventurer, yes? Ah, oh, your dress and bearing told me as much. Since when is being a, in a Grand Company uniform tell me automatically that you think I'm an adventurer? I dare say that then on your travels you have seen firsthand the difficulties which yet plague our nation. Witness the struggles of the Alamigos displaced masses and those whose homes were consumed in the fires of the Calamity? The Sultan is also unsympathetic to their plight, of course, yet how can one provides, begin to provide succor to such countless multitudes? One man had an answer. Goldbert Mandeville had a dream. Yeah, remember Agent Hildebrand's dad? The guy who ran around in his underwear? That's who came up with this place. Scary thought, isn't it? A dream. Have a house of old and told wonders that will provide stable employment and lodgings to the displaced, birth and merriment to the disconsolate, and prosperity and prosperity and plenty to the Sultanate at large. Pro <laughs> to many of our patrons, the Gold Saucer is merely Aeosia's foremost entertainment venue, a place to forget about their cares for the day. To me, it is one of the founding stones upon which our realm will be built, a miracle wrought by the hand of the greatest man I have ever known. Something tells me you understand that which I have told you that you perchance share a similar dream. But I shall keep you no longer. The Gold Saucer and all its wonders await you, friend. Pray enjoy them to your heart's content. Till we meet again, may the Spinner's Pool ever be kind. And with that, we complete the challenge of the World of Wonders. And so basically, that's everything we wanted to do here at the Gold Saucer, except for one little thing. Remember we had the Jumbo Cack Pots? Well, there's also a Mini Cack Pot. This thing, unlike the... Jumbo Cag Pot can be played daily. So, here's how it works. Purchase a mini Cag Pot ticket. Now you can get hints to finding out what is the best way to win a prize. So, we already have a hint here. One of the numbers that has already been scratched off for us in number two. Basically, what we can do is choose any three numbers, but we have to scratch three more numbers off. And so that basically hints us to where we may want to go. Now, those three numbers that we ultimately choose after we've uncovered three slots will be what we choose, and the sum of those numbers is what we win. The payout is on the right side of the ticket. So let's go ahead, because I have a system for this. I always uncover three corners. Alright, now, it would seem that it would make the most sense to play this line, because if a 3 is behind this little panel that I have not uncovered, I would win the maximum amount of money you can win on a mini cat pot, which is 10,000 Manavril Gold Saucer points. 
So this is my choice. Let's see if I got 10,000. Ah, I didn't get it. No. Unfortunately, I got a 12, which is only worth 108. So basically, I got my money back. In actuality, the biggest payoff would have been down here, where I could have won 1,080 Manderville Gold Saucer Points. So, yeah, that was unlucky, I know, but hey, when you think you have a good shot at winning 10,000 Manderville Gold Saucer Points, you have to give it a try. Alright, so, now that we've taken care of everything in the Gold Saucer, and wasted 25 minutes of our time, let's go back to Ulda! Yeah, we're gonna run this episode long today because of the fact that since the cat came out of the bag out of something I wanted to show off later on, we are now... I was pretty much forced to show that off. Because I know that you guys probably would have commented on me like, We know how the game is played! Why aren't you showing this off yet? So, consider it an obligation. From me to you. Well, let's speak with Commander Swift again, and take the next challenge available for us, entitled, Revolution. Swift has a message for you from General Raubon. The Flame General left word that he would proceed to the Fragrant Chamber as soon as he returned. He wished us to discuss your recent discoveries, as well as the results of our own investigation. Master Alphonode has already been informed, and should be waiting for you outside. We proceed to the Royal Promenade with all haste. And speak with Bartholomew. Yeah, it won't take long to finish this particular challenge. It's just go up to the promenade and then go into the Sultana's chamber and see what we have gleaned from the episode that has occurred over the last couple of days. So we want to go to the Chamber of Rule for this one. Because that's the closest place to where we need to go. Jenlin's here, for those of you who are wondering. This is the guy, if you choose to start the game here in Ola as the title of a gladiator, once you get the opportunity to play for the Elevated Warrior class, it's Jenlin's you'll speak to in order to become a paladin. That's basically the sword equivalent of a dragoon. So, let's go up to the Royal Promenade. It looks like we're not the only one who is here, along with Alpha Node. Another person is about to take on the same adventure that I am. Well, maybe not, but we'll see what Bartholomew has to say. Thank you very much. So the challenge is made officially completed, but we will not get the rewards until after this cutscene. Commander Swift has kept us apprised of your recent activities. You've made great strides towards quelling the violence. Despite our best efforts to determine what provoked this uprising, truth continues to elude us. Have you uncovered aught which might shed some light on the mystery? That's a good question. General? Sultana? What have you to tell us? This information does not leave this room. Oh. Under lock and key, huh? Suddenly we're the CIA. The Syndicate's decision to reject the Doman refugees' appeal for asylum had lasting repercussions. Of course. A number of those displaced by the Calamity claimed it was proof of a policy of discrimination. Together with a group of Alamegan refugees, they organized a series of demonstrations to protest against the Sultanate. Demonstrations which became heated, but did not descend into violence. Until... Until a certain incident served as a call to arms. Of course. A unit of brass blades sent to supervise a demonstration loosed arrows upon unarmed protesters. It was this atrocity which prompted the refugees to take up arms. I need not tell you what followed. Yeah, because we already know we what happened. at first that the attack was born of a miscommunication. When emotions run high, they happen. But suspicions were raised regarding the unit's commanding officer, whom I ordered interrogated. Sure enough, our fears were soon confirmed. The dog confessed that a merchant had offered him coin to give the order. A merchant in the employ of Taleji Adeleji. Yeah, remember the guy who wanted to help out the Doman refugees in Runes of Fuse? Well, he's now a turncoat. 
Telegi Adelegi. Yep. But he spoke in favor of the Doman's cause, and has ever seemed sympathetic towards the refugees' plight. Why would he do such a thing? Know you of the Cartano Reclamation Bill? We're about to find out. It is a proposal to annex the Cartano Flats so that refugees may establish permanent settlements. But... When last I looked, that was disputed territory. Yeah, that's where the Calamity took place for those of you who remember the story from the beginning. Aye. Some might even call it a battlefield. Yeah, we're gonna get to see what Cartano looks like now. I do believe. The destruction wrought by Bahamut was greatest at the Cartano Flats. That much is common knowledge. Of course. What is less well known is that his rampage laid bare ancient Alagon ruins, of which no record existed. Until the Calamity. There are certain differences of opinion as to how these ruins should be handled. Which is why each nation maintains a military presence in the region to this day. Yet differ though we may, we are still allies. Therefore, in the interest of preserving the Aeorzean Alliance, we have reached an agreement. Any conflict which may arise during the course of military exercises in the region shall have no bearing on relations between our nations. There is actually something that's attached to that that I'll probably show another day. In full knowledge of this delicate state of affairs, Telegi Adelegi proposed the Cartano Reclamation Bill, a shameless bloody ruse which stands to benefit him in but one conceivable way. If successful, he will gain control over the disputed territory under the guise of assisting in the resettlement effort. And you can be sure he'll build an orphanage next to every Alagon ruin. So where does that put us? He threaten the unity of the Aeorzean Alliance and risk countless lives for personal gain. Why are you Lalafels so evil? He walks a path Look at the evil grin on his independent face. Independent of any faction and beholden to none of his fellows on the Syndicate. By inciting the less fortunate to violence, he hopes to convince others that the Cartano Reclamation Bill is the only viable solution. His sympathy for the plight of the Domins was not but posturing to gain credibility with the refugees. Of that there can be no doubt. And so where does that put us? Forgive me, but what could possibly motivate Telegi Adelegi to go to such lengths? What is so special about these ruins that he would risk his position on the Syndicate and, most likely, charges of treason against the Sultanate? Omega. Omega? Pardon? Go on, Sultana. Or is this best led, said by the General? An Oligon monstrosity, not unlike the Ultima weapon. Mayhap larger, we know not. It has yet to be fully excavated. Alagon inscriptions indicate that it was created to fell Bahamut himself. That sounds pretty Fabulous. nasty. It might explain why Nail Van Darnus chose to bring the Red Moon down upon the Cartano Flats, given the ends he went to to ensure Eorzea's annihilation. Destroying the one weapon which could stay the Elder Primal may well have seemed like good sense. When first I bore witness to the power of the Ultima Weapon, I doubted the evidence of my senses. And now you tell me there is another such weapon. One which could contend with Bahamut. Bahamut! Hard to believe, huh? Aye. We were skeptical ourselves. Truth be told, until the Ultima Weapon's existence came to light, we thought the inscription had been mistranslated. And yet? At present, Omega is more akin to a fossil than a tool of war, having long since ceased to function. As such, its true potential cannot accurately be gauged. Well, that should be good for However, us, right? If someone were to restore it, as the Carleans did the Ultima Weapon, I have little doubt that he would wield untold power. 
Power enough to subjugate Uldar like as not, and the rest of Eorzea besides. Which is doubtless why Telegi Adelegi yearns to have it. That he should aspire to world domination. He who has ever walked two paces behind Lord Lolorito in matters of commerce. Tis in acknowledgement of his own limitations that he seeks this power. Woe betide us all should we allow him to have it. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh, who's there? Pray waste no time chasing rats. Only a fool would believe that secrets can be kept in Ulda. It would seem the implications of the Sultanate's refugee problem are rather more far-reaching than we assumed. Apparently. Seems pretty bad out there, doesn't it? Well, now that we know what we're up against, hopefully we'll find a way to stop it. But for now, we'll bring this prolonged episode to a close, yeah. I would have done some more storyline if I didn't unfortunately run into a situation where I'd leaked information I was planning to show on later on when it was more timeline accurate. But given the circumstances, it was better to just show it off today with the gold saucer. So I hope that everyone enjoyed our little visit to the gold saucer, but it was certainly the reprieve we needed given all the tragedy and sorrow that has been attached to this particular episode. Hopefully Alpha, Alpha Node will have good news for us next time. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV on Realm Reborn. And when I join you again, we will see what Alpha Node has to possibly say about the situation in Cartano and find out where he wants us to go next. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew with Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.